All right, there we go. Good morning, Ashish. How are you doing? Very good, very good. How about you, Rajiv? So far, so good, Ashish. So, pleasure to have you on this show, season two of Leaders and Libraries. Thank you. Thank you for accepting the invitation and coming on board to join a team of 40 leaders. So, before we get started and talk on a very, very different book, I didn't have anybody else pick up this book because this book kind of plays uh, on the spirituality side, plus also on the management side. So it's a very, it's a very different book compared to the regular leadership books that people prefer to choose. And I've not read the book, so I read the book after you spoke about an interest on talking on this. It was a good experience on the book. Before we get into that, let me have the honor of introducing you to the audience. So good morning, good afternoon, good evening, whichever part of the world you are and going to listen to Ashish. All of you attended Leaders and Libraries season one, and you heard 33 leaders come and talk about 22 powerful books. The success of that event pushed us to start season two, and we have 40 leaders coming and talking on 40 exclusive books. That's massive and very interesting and exciting for me as the founder of the organization. And today we have yet another guest, Mr. Ashish Kukreja, and I got to know about him through his wife. Incidentally, I connected with his wife on LinkedIn, inviting her for the event. And then she said, you should talk to Ashish, who is a crazy book lover like you are, Rajiv. And that's where we have Ashish today. Ashish is the founder and CEO of HomeSpy. It's one of the leading and the oldest market aggregator in the space of real estate. Before the days when aggregators was not even a word and real estate was all happening Gosh, posh. I think he started an organization, put things together in a very unorganized sector as it is. And uh, been running the organization for what, close to nine years now, Ashish? Yes, that's right. Yeah, very successfully. And what is interesting is he, in his profile, puts founder <laughs> and investor, not an IT and I am. I'm curious to know why would you want to add that there? Uh, but that's an interesting uh, statement you've added. Uh, above all this, uh, is, is a crazy book lover and uh, we got to chat about his love on books and my love on books. And today we have a great book that we're going to talk on. Thank you so much for accepting the invitation once again, Ashish, and uh, welcome on board. Thank you. Thank you, Rajiv. Uh, pleasure to be here. Super. Uh, let's get started. Um, I'm going to he hear from you first. Why that not IIT, not I am on LinkedIn? Then let's go to the first question. I'm sure the audience and me are very curious to know that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, so when I started my journey uh, as angel investor, you know, I, I was getting a lot of uh, people reaching out to me and saying that, you know, um, you know, we don't get enough uh, uh, audience, you know, to look into our ideas and stuff like that. Mm. You know, probably somewhere I also felt that, you know, uh, when we started uh, and, you know, so I always thought that this is something which, you know, this bias is something which is not great for startup culture in India, mm. you know, where, you know, I thought probably someone need to sort of come out and mention it. So, uh, you know, whatever little we have done, uh, and the kind of team I have, none of them mm. are from IIT and I am, but I think they, they have done really well in their, uh, their respective journeys uh, mm. with us. So, so I just thought about it, you know, just, it just happened that, you know, I thought that somebody should, you know, because even now when I'm, part of various platforms and I look for investment opportunities, this bias is still there. And I think yeah. this is not for, for our, 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 uh, you know, the culture, which we want to build the, the startup culture. Yeah. I agree. I agree. There are a lot of guys with great minds outside the campuses of IITs and IMs in India who are doing great work. Right. So I think there's a good one kind of, it's, it's a very strong puller when somebody looks at your profile, that's what catches your attention first. Then they go and read the other stuff about you and your work. <laughs> Lovely. So before we get into the book of the day, Ashish, uh, tell me how early did your association with books start and how did it happen? Well, um, so I was, I was in school, I, I a 14 year old boy, you know, this, the uh, so some of the great books you get from nowhere, you know, you mm -hmm. buy them. They are just lying somewhere, and you you get your hands on them. Mm -hmm. So you know, uh, I remember going to one of my, one of my uncle's place, and and you know, somebody gifted him this book, and he said, you know, I don't read it. You know, in a very funny manner, he said, this bald guy, you know, I don't know who is he, but there was a picture on the face of the book. And <laughs> I said, oh, let me, you know, I I was I was supposed to take a bus back home from Chandigarh to my hometown in Karnal. 
so okay i'll take this and i started reading it the book is straight from guts you know and uh, you know just a story you know just a story of a aggressive american boy who comes from non management background right. you know i probably would have not understood most of the book you know that six sigma and all that stuff but the story was so great you know and he becoming a ceo of one of the biggest corporate on earth in those days you know so it sort of moved something inside me and you know that seed of choosing management mm. i come from a family where nobody uh, is expected to go into commerce you know and all that stuff i think mm. that book helped me to sort of uh, uh, be very clear about the fact that you know this is what i want to do mm. and you know like that lux movie you know then you know <laughs> what what moves you so yeah. i think that kind of I, i can't thank enough uh, mr jack welch for writing that book <laughs> फैंटास्टिक <laughs> So, so which means your association to management books started very early uh, at fourteen itself, and did you also have interest in the uh, fiction space uh, novels area as well as you started moving? And tell me, how did books play a role in your growth, Ashish? Yeah, surprisingly, actually, not even till today, I pick too many, uh, you know, novels and you know, um, the, so so fictional stuff. You know, I don't somehow, mm-hmm. uh, but. i know that uh, as a book reader this journey will also start very soon mm-hmm. you know something will get triggered as and i'm very sure about it mm-hmm. uh, i need that one book in my hand which moves me uh, you know you know you have read those uh, the white tiger you know five point someone and all that Ooh. stuff you know which was like part of your growing up uh, yeah. uh, that's fine but you know it's not that i look forward to so uh, but you know i'm one of probably after this book uh you know books are always there with me mm. and uh, you know i'm one of those boys who is always found in library you know in my management days mm. you know i'll just pick up magazines and keep uh, so rather than doing other stuff i was mostly found in library and you know uh, you need to be lucky and sometimes you know because yeah. we got a couple of very good teachers in our mm. management you know you need that one teacher you know always so that guy is i i want to mention him his name is professor nagendra choudhury you know i was mm-hmm. in ufi hyderabad in 2004 mm-hmm. you know he was one exception he used to take those uh, he just you know he used to take us for those extra sessions give us a book and we were supposed to create presentations so you know he made us read book every 15 days How which lovely. was uh, which was you know so like i said you should always look for that one teacher you know and yeah. i think that impacted so these are phases that was the first phase mm. second phase i would say when i started working you know probably uh, you are reading lot but you can't resonate too much i think that's mm. my story mm. i'm sure it's not with uh, many of uh, yeah. people out in your 20s you're just reading but you know you have not evolved as individual so you know uh, i realized that that uh, you know if books have to impact you you need to be prepared for it you know you need sure. to be you know you need to get evolved as a individual as a person you, do, you need to get experience you know out there so Correct. 20s went reading lot of stuff there was a lot of database inside but no application mm. so i think uh, that's how define my 20s but i think 30s when they started and you have gained some experience you have become entrepreneur you know mm. when the books come and you know start start fill you up you know and you start applying them or yeah. you know they start creating magic in your life for uh, you know i i i got it right very early in 30s that you know why do people write i think most of the people still think that you know this is business but i got it that you know when you experience something great you want to share it with the world sure. and you know when you pick up a book of somebody you know who you know who has done good work you know he's just about there teaching you he's just about yeah. there trying to tell something to you i think that mm. resonated in a you know really well with me and i and i understood it's not business for people who write it's it, they they just want to make world a better place you know so i think the 30s went into you know reading some of the great books you know and uh, you know i i think uh, 
I have many examples. Uh, I was mm. telling you, Rajiv. You know, yeah. for example, just a recent one. You know, I I read a book called Measure What Matters. You know, it's all about OKR. You know, objective. Mm. Uh, I think it's just a just a subject, but it 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 impacted my way of working so much, sure. and it created that uh, uh, sense of purpose within my team. Mm. So I think books keep coming, and they keep giving you that mojo. So that's my journey, you know, so far. And you have constantly been striving to apply the learnings in life, right, Ashish? That's what I'm able to sense as you speak. So I, you know, when you read with all your, uh, you know, awareness and consciousness. you know you start connecting dots you know mm-hmm. like this topic is very deep but i think you start uh, observing that book out there you know in your life mm. so i think that helps you know uh, uh i then you come to a point and you know that you know what's the you know why is book uh, as you know it why it is so important you know why it is happening from so many years you know you just <laughs> you know uh, you know from those grunts to whatever you know why mm. books are part of you know i think many people don't understand and they just understand you know to book to pick something from the shelf no books are 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 far more than just a book read and i think uh, i want to die reading a book you know if if i am if I, you know probably that's the way i i feel about books how lovely how lovely i that's really very well said actually because i think books expand you amplify you as an individual right and then there's no alternative to it chop sure. definitely it's a great 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 experience to be with books uh, to be able to apply those books and luckily as an entrepreneur you get enough and more opportunity to try it out right and then you see the benefits of what the author has really thought and written right uh, that brings us to the day uh, and the book uh, that we're going to talk about today so the untethered soul by michael singer great book i had not heard about the book till you told me uh, i heard about the book but i have not read the book i saw it in kindle somewhere uh, never got a pull to read it uh, but now i'm very happy thanks to you that i have one more powerful book in my kitty tell me what made you pick this book ashish when i connected with you for this event again see the second most important probably one of another most important book just came in my hands you know uh, again the common uh, factor is my wife so one of her friend uh, gave that book to her and you know uh, you know she just looked at her and uh, it at the book and and it, she is a psychologist so she tries to avoid because she has read so much of psychology so she this sort of you know gives a, gives uh, a miss to such mm-hmm. subject mm-hmm. so you know i was it was just lying there at home and i said okay it's a small book you know uh, let me just pick it up and it just happened to me and again uh, it changed me you know probably uh, when when i was 14 and now when i am 40 you know another book which is sort of um, uh, made me give a lot of purpose so uh, yeah i think uh, it 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 sort of came in my hand uh, i just just happened <laughs> thank you i am lucky or else i would have probably missed a good book <laughs> or probably would have picked up the book later in my life i could do it right now at 40 thanks to you again so let's let's start talking about a couple of things that michael talks in this book and a very beautiful book and what i like this uh it's not draggy uh yeah. though it can sometimes slip into philosophical area but it doesn't make you feel that he's going to a space of philosophy or something or spiritualism but kind of holds on because couple of pages on each thing that's all it is not 30 40 50 pages on one topic 6 7 8 pages khatam kar liye just moving on so it's 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 nice it kind of keeps you on the pace that 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 brings me to the very first question on something the author is talking he talks about something called creating a semblance of control if we are in control of the voice inside the head so what is this voice inside the head and how should one work on kind of controlling it great so i think it's a it's a very deep topic so uh, let me still try you know uh, so your thoughts uh, you know the, the, you know it the, it just say that you are not your thoughts the oh. summary of this whole chapter is that you need to separate yourself from your thought oh. if you can watch your thoughts clearly and and if you can watch that circus going inside your head oh. it clearly means that you are not that circus you know otherwise right. you will not be able to watch it oh. very simple So you know, let's not make it complex. Fact that you are able to observe your thoughts, you know that where they're headed. Mm. You, know, you know what are you thinking? It clearly shows that you are not what you think. And uh, you know, and most of the times when we think too much, either either we are we are we are fearful about something or we are regret 
regretting about something or any other emotion true so i think this chapter uh, which is all about you know so you know yeah. you it also probably tells you that you can't resist them don't try mm-hmm. to control them you know you know even if you are observe them that's a winning start so right. you know like it's a very very deep topic and uh, you know as a leader you need to first work internally before mm-hmm. you start working externally mm-hmm. so this, you know this particular point is about working internally because if you don't work internally and you go out and start handling things in externally right. then you are like a walking talking time bomb or it is a disaster okay. because you will just go out and and you know rub off your uh, you know your stories on people mm. and those things may have no relevance because they are just your thoughts correct it's not your reality so this chapter is all about you know seat sitting at at that seat of consciousness mm. and observing your thoughts and i i'll try to keep it simple right so any any one instance where you actually could take a step back and actually were could could pick that one thought that went through you Oh, many of them. So now, so it it has to become way of your life. Mm. You know, again, it's it's a journey. You know, I have read this book probably four or five times, and it was it was in demand, much required in COVID days. Mm. You know, I, I that it, this was you know when the, it was a peak of that stress. Yeah, I think one thing I was doing was I was with my book on death and soul. So you know, so I think it's I I can go on and on, Rajiv. You know, just that you know when you are in middle of let's say somebody has just uh, you know scratched your car on the road or mm. or you are in middle of uh, a, a, a you know a debate within a team or mm. you know a negotiation mm. you need to just observe it's as simple as that so right. i think uh, and you know so that you 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 don't uh, move move away with your thoughts you should be Correct. there and so i still not get entangled in the thought right yes absolutely you know it, then it has many layers right you 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 get to know that how it is playing on your body mm. how is it impacting your emotions because there a lot of lot of times your thoughts start playing on your body right. so if you are observing you get to know that you know something is not right about what you're thinking yeah 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 very true very true i mean the playing on the body a uh, playing on the mind that you're talking about is what uh, robin sharma also talks about in the 5 am club right he talked about this the mindset the heart set and the soul set kind of thing he says any stimulus if you're able to figure it out how is it affecting the heart the mind and the so called soul he says you will be in a far better aware and conscious state to take decisions it's not actually tough you know it is it is it is possible if if you have a sane mind and you would want to do that you can take a step back and be aware as i am talking to you i am aware of what you're saying i'm aware of what i'm going to ask next that is yeah. a, it's, it's good for us right to to take the right decisions and not just go astray lovely one that that takes me to the second one which is uh, very interesting for me uh, which is again very deep right he says it's very difficult to understand who are you and all of us know this so i'm not going to take this into a space where people look at you as some baba ji ashish talking about this but i would definitely want you to give one or two simple inputs to the young minds of how does one start early in understanding this who are you yeah i think it's 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 again an extension of what we discussed in last question it is it's sort of seat of consciousness right so as a, as a entrepreneur as a leader you have to let go of your ego you know that's very important because if you are driven by your ego then you will uh, end up uh, you know in that sacred games you know the one which i don't know if you've seen or not that kabhi kabhi apun ko lagta hai apni bhagwan hai you know so that's that's where you you don't know who you are and then you yeah. think you know everything is happening because of you in your work in your family or whatever that's where you go wrong so that's this chapter is all about uh having that seat of consciousness you mm. know you need to know you are not a body you mm. need to know you are not your possession you know you end up right. with the money or that and that you know that valuation or whatever you are not that you are mm. you are much more than that you are not your degrees we just spoke about Correct. that Correct. you know so i can go on and on you know you are nothing but your consciousness the whole chapter mm. is about that you are nothing you know you are not about your car about your degrees about your team size about your valuations you are Your consciousness. So mm-hmm. I think that sort of gives you that limitless feeling. Mm-hmm. You know, that gives you that freedom, and then, uh, then you know you can just use it to your benefit. Uh, again, it's an ego point. I should not say it that. It is. It is. Yeah. yeah. I know. How has it helped you in your entrepreneurship journey, Ashish? 
Uh, so I think a uh, lot of times, you know, when you look at competition or you look at those peaks in your business, mm. you know, you, you tend to get carried away. You know, you okay. feel that you are in control and stuff like that. Mm. That's where you know you need to understand that you know uh, it's not that you control everything. It's 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 very imp- this feeling is very important. The, the fact yeah. that as as a leader you should be grounded. You know that, that gratitude thing, which should also reflect at work, mm. is very important. So I think. when you are when you know that uh, you know you are just uh, one of those billions of people on this earth and this one tiny little earth which is just floating in the yeah. space you know that feeling is very important so that you don't end up giving some shape or model to yourself correct yeah, right. so then the journey itself is fun absolutely you know in fact very interestingly i was having a chat with a friend of mine yesterday and she got her son admitted in a college in dehradun and she's from bangalore and she she went to dehradun uh, got him admitted there and they went around the place and this was her first uh, closest proximity to the so called massiveness of mountains coming from a city like bangalore where you must have seen a chota mota pahad hill dekha hoga but the massive mountain which is which is not even the start of himalayas just the base of the himalayas iske aage bhi matlab snow shuru bhi nahi hua hai and she said as we were stood there and saw that suddenly realized i am just a peck of nothing in front of the massiveness of that mountain which is not even the start of himalayas absolutely yeah. so pretty much what you are also saying right yeah. then you realize who am i मैसी No, I think it's absolutely possible. See, uh, you know, if you are not thinking like that and you have really done well, then you're lucky. You know, because mm-hmm. I think this is the essential of any good leadership. You know, it's mm-hmm. not basic. So uh, while we think that people in the so my another very uh, bullish thought or what I what I'm so excited about is the generation which is the next generation. Right. I've been telling this to all my. You know, uh friends family stakeholders that you know the best part is that i'm so excited you know i have friends who are in their uh, uh early 30s or you know late 20s as well you know they are far more mature they are far mm. more, you know apart from you know that small percentage which you can you can ignore yeah. but at the same time you know some of the great leaders you know i'm like for example if i have to you know i, I will not try my uh, you know uh, uh, bhavesh agarwal ola you know i met that guy i i met him couple of times you know so i met him when it was just about uh, a 20 fleet size you know in bombay you know so i one could re- understand that you know these are grounded guys they know what yeah. are they up to you know so uh, so yes i i think that uh, i i i think that our gen- uh, the generation which we uh, which is coming and taking up i think they are far more mature and uh, so i'm not worried about that part i think right if that's, you know, that's very encouraging you know, for all the young minds listening to you ashish you know if you read steve jobs and you know you can clearly see that uh, pre his uh, you know those days when he was just uh, yeah. you know starting and you know when he was when he was thrown out of a company you can you can see that aggressive steve jobs and the post he comes back you can see that change you know nobody can say he's not aggressive he still uh, on the face but still you can see those changes so i think that's that's where you he, he may have just got lucky that's my view he may have just yeah. got that you know so there are times when you get lucky but uh, if you don't want to get lucky you should be a very grounded leader i agree i agree and i completely subscribe to your point ashish and thanks for bringing that it's very encouraging for all the young minds who will listen to you that i think the next generation is far more aware and conscious than what we were Yeah. which is good which kind of proves the darwin theory also that every generation has to be better than the earlier one so they are uh, they know what they want there is far more clarity than what you and me had in our 30s i wish we had that clarity we could have done far better than what we've done for ourselves these guys know ki chahte kya karna kya chahte kahan jana kahin kisi ka rasta clear dikhta hai unko absolutely absolutely right which is what that who are you kind of a stuff and those of them who don't get into the ego they have made it Lovely, lovely one. That's a very nice way of articulating. That brings us to the next thought, which is also a very 
interesting one uh, that Michael talks about is uh, how does one leverage this this phrase that he calls as infinite energy to achieve a purpose? Yeah. And what is the infinite energy in your own articulation, Ashish? How do you see it? I think this is the most important part of book if you're reading it for the purpose of leadership or management, you know. So yeah. uh, we all have this enormous energy. This chapter is all about that, you know. Then why do we feel drained? Mm. You know, uh, when we try to control too much, uh, replace too much, displace too much emotions, you know. Mm. So controlling, replacing, displacing emotions, too much mm. of that will always suck your energy. So, you know, it gives a very, very good example. I, I use this example very often in my mm. team as well. Mm. You know, so it gives an example. There's a guy who's just broken up, you know, and then he's lying there on his bed and he's all uh, half dead, you know, doesn't feel like getting up, doesn't feel like going going out or eating something and stuff like that. Mm. And it's been like weeks and weeks. And suddenly, uh, girlfriend calls and says, mm. you know, how are you doing? And, mm. and probably says that, you know, let's meet t- t- today in the evening. You know, you will see a sudden change. The mm. guy will get up, he'll, you know, everything is fine in life. And <laughs> so what really happened if, if you were, if your energy was gone, if, if you were like, if you have, you know, sort of given up, what suddenly happened? So this example is very, very good example that, you know, it's just about something out True. there. You know, you True. have drained yourself. So, so, uh, you know, so it says that if you have to keep this energy open, the only way is to not let it close. So there's no other uh, gyan. You know, don't let it close. So you should you should be conscious. Again, the word comes back. You should be yeah. conscious when it is getting closed. So you know, it is usually when there is a drama inside. You know, mm. you know. So if you are able to carry that sort of a uh, aura or a, I don't know what you want to call it within your team, mm. that builds a great performance culture because you know sometimes we misunderstand energy that you know one is one is very aggressive, shouting. You know. And no, you know, team gets to see it. Team gets to see the, the energy, which is about, you know, not getting close. You are in meeting right. discussion. Don't close yourself. If you're an mm. open person, which means that you have a lot of energy to offer people. Yeah. You know, some people hear this, yeah, it's very moody, hai, boss, hamara. you know, sometimes mm. you very excited, sometimes you get very angry, you know, mm. sab, you know, you uh, don't understand. Mm. So I think there are those people, you know, energy sometimes it opens sometimes it closes it's not constant mm. you know as a leader you need to have an open energy you should be an open energy source yeah like that. yeah yeah you, that you have infinite energy you know you should never you know it it, it is just they are ready for you if you just use but it. but tell me ashish as as human beings bogged by emotions isn't it a very idealistic phrase that I'm in infinite energy uh, okay, abundant I know, I know. So I think, see, there, there are movements, you know, as you know, this books will tell you in, in parts that, you know, mm. there are movements when you will, something will come, it will hit you, you know, mm. and they will be extreme. Mm. They will be on, on, on something on a very good side as well, something on a very bad side as well. But you need to, again, sit back and look at them, yeah. you know, you know, you don't make it a drag, you know, so, uh, it, it does tell you, so tell you that how one should behave in a moment, you right. know, so uh, yeah, that's about it. So, uh, you know, you may not be there with that kind of energy 24 by seven, yeah. but there will be moments when that energy will be questioned or mm. fired. It will be not there available. You have to sort of look for it. Yeah. So that's possible. We are humans at the end of the day. Yeah. yeah I think, I think that point is very powerful that it's a moment. Oh, well, that incident happens. You're going down. You can always spring out quickly and then get back to the normal behavior and make people feel good, yes. right? I you know as you said that, you know, I was just remembering a uh, very powerful learning I had from this powerful book called Seven Habits by mm-hmm. Stephen. Mm-hmm. He you said whether you want to call it aura or anything, uh, probably could give this phrase and I'm borrowing it from Stephen. He calls it carrying your own weather within you. Mm-hmm. Right. He says, you know, when you carry the weather within you, the day outside can be melancholy, can be drowsy, can be draggy. Or the day also it can be sunny, whatever. You're still that energetic man or woman walking around and throwing it on people. And people love to come and talk to you. Mm-hmm. So that, that ability to carry that weather within you can probably throw that infinite energy, right? Very so interesting. I, have to, I have to tell you this one statement, you know, which is probably linked or not linked. I just, uh, 
uh, had seen this movie couple of days back i would recommend that movie to you also it's called the bright side uh, it's not a movie uh, so uh, you know this one statement just one statement it says agar aapko life mein kuch nahi bhi karna hai kuch nahi bhi banna hai uske liye bhi kuch banna padta hai good one kaha chal raha netflix mein ke amazon mein hai Uh, this is a like this is a app called Mubi M U B I uh, which is all parallel cinema great app you know it's a it's a it's a answer to all these OTT apps you know <laughs> I'm 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 pasting the word yeah, I'm going to go watch this <laughs> well, I love it tell told by one of the, these sages on in Banaras to this guy you know who's just wandering for the meaning of life he says you know I, I really it really hit me hard. very very nice you know what i'm i'm going to say something which is very con- different from this but some one statement that hit me very hard uh, day before ashish was from uh, he says focus is that distraction that can distract you from other distractions <laughs> i said wow this was massive correct <laughs> focus can be that distraction that can distract you from other distractions i just thought this was beautifully articulated true true <laughs> <laughs> lovely So nice, and just loving this conversation. I'm going to ask you this, Ashish, and I, I I understood this a little bit, but I still have my own cobwebs in the head, and I'm going to ask you to help me and also the audience. Sure. Michael talks about this phrase called "stealing freedom for your soul." Yeah. Mm-hmm. What is this damn bloody phrase? Explain this yeah. to us. Yeah. yeah. So you know, it, it's about your psyche, right? So at the mm. end of the day, the health, health, health of your psyche. Hmm. No, like you have a health healthy body hmm. you have a healthy psyche hmm. you know, so uh, and it tells that you know it's all about it also probably goes to that point where it says the mind is a tool at the end of the day don't overburden your mind because you know if you put your mind to this work oh. so basically the concept is that you have this vision of world you want everything to fit into that world okay today you want to move out you want a certain temperature a certain way of behavior of people mm. this this is your vision and you want your mind to always work towards that vision okay this is not your mind this is not what is a function of your mind it's just a computer it's okay. a mini computer sitting out there the only work it should do and this statement is again rajiv which stayed with me in this book is the mind should only ponder great thoughts solve scientific problems and help humanity You should not make mind do the fourth thing. Mm. Trust me, ninety percent people try to make it fit into the world outside, right? You know your mm. expectations. ये क्या सोच रहा है? अभी इसने ऐसा बोला तो मुझे ऐसा लगेगा. You know, it's mm. like your your fitment. Uh. So it's about the health of psyche. Health of psyche is is about how your mind functions. So mind is becoming. mind should not become part of a melodrama mind should only do these three things great thoughts scientific problem see he's he's specific scientific problem he mm. never says solve problem mm. then to you always use mind for solving you know Correct. thousands of problems every day Correct. and help humanity so that's about you know that's just stealing freedom from your soul right you know you're sort of freeing yourself from these like i repeat drama mm, 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 mm. are you able to think of any moment that happened in your life That oh. kind of, I, I could actually steal myself. Is this moment? For instance, hey. Uh, I think you know. Yes, at times when you when you you when you face uncertainties, when you face people who don't respond the way you want them, mm-hmm. and then you try to you know push your case. So you Correct. sit there and you say, "Nay, boss." You know, rather than that, you know, if you're observing, you're more observing, you're more listening, mm. and then you let the mind focus on the problem. Right, right. So any time when you are when you are moving from individual to problem, mm. you are stealing freedom from for yourself. Oh, I like that. Uh, so you are not getting entangled with that guy or that individual. You are getting on with the problem. Yeah, that that's a nice way of saying. We're looking at the problem, not the person in the problem. Yeah. Yes. Uh, very nice. That's. This is this gives me a little more clarity. I want to go back and read those pages once again. A very interesting one. Uh, now I'm going to ask you the next one, uh, which was which was pretty good for me. Uh, 
she talks about this this chapter called far far beyond and going far far beyond right now in a in a in a world we're all and you spoke about this fitment right where everything seems to be finite what is this going far beyond the finite yes oh. it's it's very spiritual but mujhe aap isko aap if you can i'm sure it's it's tough and i'm i'm kind of <laughs> asking you a lot but from the word of leadership would you be able to help young minds understand this absolutely ravi i think this is all about leadership i think i'm i i have zero confusion on this i'll tell you why mm. so this point is all about it's core to your creativity okay and you as a leader you are supposed to be creative right one it's about handling uncertainty it's all about leadership it's about feeling of having that limitlessness you know how you can innovate grow or you know go to the next stage of your your own capabilities or your organization's capability so it's about breaking that mental model mm. you know uh, that you know this is my limit right. it it all talks about going far far beyond as in don't define your limits don't create that the example which is given in the book if i'm not wrong is about that island inside you know so island is your creation mm. you know break that island you know this is what you feel about yourself this this you just can't define yourself you know because mm. you're limitless mm. so it sounds spiritual but you know it it has lot of relevance because it pushes you to operate at edges right. you know so the whole the whole discussion around not being in comfort zone is about you know operate at your edges so that one day you can cross them uh when it comes to new business models new product implementations you know uh, you you need to know your edges it's it's not that you will always be able to go past them Correct. you know, you will have to spend months or even years at those edges but at least stay there so you know i think that's where the chapter is all about it's about it's about not limiting yourself not creating a mental model of your uh, of yourself mm. and this enables you to you know sort of take those uh, little outlier calls you know as they say ah, that's know. that's a nice one that's a nice one yeah that makes sense and guys i'm going to i'm going to tell all of you who are going to listen to ashish's talk here and if you go and pick up this book read it i would also recommend you to read the infinite mindset of simon sinek to understand what is going far beyond how go, how can you go limitless that's again a marvelous book by simon that give you lot of inputs on how can you have that growth mindset to just think limitless and be creative that ashish is talking about as a leader i think lovely one ashish thank you so much for that uh that gives me a lot of understanding i i have this moment of aha that i had and i'm going to ask you when did you have it there's a beautiful concept called the secret of the middle path i just loved it for me this was one of the all time favorite of this book i must chapter ko do bar padha sir yaar isko main wapas padh raha hu correct sure ye main pehle bhi yahan bhi ja raha hu wahan bhi ja raha hu ye roku kaise 6 pe aake correct correct it's swinging to the eight swinging to the back to the four and five of the clock what is this middle path and how when did you find your secret and oh, yeah. tell us that aha moments exactly as an instance i want to see that ah oh, that's a difficult one you know you need that probably every day but still you know obviously talks about not not staying at extreme right oh. it's that it's all about that tau you know that's balance that pendulum theory oh. so you know you will still swing oh. you know, not mentioned in the book but i think that's what i have made my sense out of it that you will right. still swing but you will never be in any of extreme situations yeah. you know this usually happens when you say to your your people yourself you are overwhelmed you know that's when you are losing balance you know that's yeah. when you are trying too many things at the same time you know uh, we have many such examples you know which means somewhere you are not structured you know i'm trying to bring in lot of uh, day to day life leadership you know entrepreneurship you know in this question it's about you know you not uh, disciplined maybe yeah. structure that's when you lose your balance mm. and you try to blame many yeah. things you know you know even covid for that matter you know it it warranted you know a lot of overreaction you mm. know we all reacted initially you know while we were in middle of overreaction again this chapter helped me imagine you know what good it did to me we always knew that first we need to survive mm. so like let's not talk about anything gab jo ho gaya ho gaya type you know mm. survive correct right. then let's talk about planning if you so these are phases while you do survive don't talk about plans let 
whoever do whatever they want to do. Mm. It's that balance. You know, you don't want too many extremes. At the same time. Once you get into a planning mode, if you're planning, then there's no survival. Mm. So, while people who saw opportunity were also looking to survive, you were not looking to survive. You were planning. Oh, we beautiful. Not committed to the next, uh, you know, whatever. Even if COVID comes back, we are still planning. We are not surviving. You know, we are, our, our method is on plan. Mm. Then once you've planned well, you change the gears. So I read that somewhere. What? it was something else and this chapter helped me implement it you know so you balanced yourself in these three phases so when you're changing gears and you're looking to uh, uh, react to the opportunity mm. you should not be planning at that time you should be just executing so you know sure. i think that sort of so i can go on and on raji but the whole thought here is that you have to always look into it that you should not be over excited things going your way you know that you know things will uh, things can be uncertain at the same time when you have a very very bad phase or uncertain thing uh, you know people look up to you that's mm. they look at that balance you know if, yeah if you come high headed or you have you know uh, you know you have sort of, sort of leaves upar karke you know you get on with it people mm. understand that you know the balance is out there which mm. is very important which is very important I think I think very right. Yeah, for you know what 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 worked for me, I I like to share this. Yeah, so I was I was affected by COVID in uh, the month of August. Yeah. Fifteenth August, we had a flag hoisting in our community. We went and did that uh, as part of the MC member there. Yeah. We did that. Then the day after, I had some crap in my stomach, and then we figured out and but test was clear. So COVID positive. So it was quarantined for twenty days, and then I came out on third of September out, and then things. The good thing that that happened in that in that twenty days was I finished some eleven books. So that was that was the best thing that happened. But that's besides the point. What is interesting is uh, through this this period of COVID, right? I was I was in this particular middle path, telling me that yeah, this is there in front of me. This too shall pass. Yeah. This was one constant thing that was holding on to. And what I consciously did is, you will not believe Ashish, from the time COVID got affected in india with initial numbers jo maine suna uske baad i never went to know about numbers and media and news mujhe kuch nahi pata yeah. the next news i knew is acha bhi kuch kam hua hai abhi ye vaccine aa raha hai i never went and studied and went through this journey ki pata lagane ke liye kya ho raha hai because i didn't want the data at all yeah yeah so i have seen people go bonkers listening to news and they have this uh, app in their phone usme se kuch data nikalta hai then they saying my god so i somehow kept myself out of that that kind of helped me personally to to not get swing swung on both the sides maybe yeah. maybe that worked for me but that was my secret to stay in the middle path during these tough time i'm sure you would have had your own yeah. but i think it's, it's very interesting because i think as leaders all the young minds listening to you uh, need to understand that especially the 30s that you spoke about actually where the urge and the fire is far more in the belly to do something It's really important to stay in the middle path, right, and not just get. The example of that young leadership is Dhoni, right? You know, we all know about him. the young leader, yeah, yeah. conscious guy. You know, not, very balanced. Yeah. Not that he read that book, but we know that. <laughs> you know, that <laughs> balance, that that the, whatever we spoke. You know, so I think that's where the young people are definitely surprising uh, many of us. Yeah. One important thing, Rajiv, I also want to add. Probably this didn't came in questions, and I wanted to add that. So. it also talk, talks uh, there's a chapter on death mm this is very important because that's based of you know you spoke about you know getting covid uh, and you know getting impacted mm. i think you know uh, i also have a, 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 a instance but i know i'll i'll for the for me you know, i'll not go there but i'll tell that you know it's very important that you you get friendly with that thought you know that it's a reality because it's a it's 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 a big anchor to lot of fear we have lot of hollowness we have we want to fill it before we want to die and we all know that you know that you know it can like everybody knows that you know it can happen any time so i agree so becoming friendly with that event is very important i know it sound little filmy but this there's this chapter which is very 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 important uh, i agree i agree and and i want to mention this i don't know if you have read this book i'm going to show it on the screen uh, i had a chat with one of the guests who came in this event uh, ashish and all of you guys listen to this carefully uh, this lady is uh, sandhidi puri she is the chro of safair foods which manages kfc and pizza hut in india right and uh, she chose a book which was again a very different book like what you have chosen and uh, i picked up this book read it 
and the author had something called nde which is near death experience oh okay and this lady got cancer went into the different realms of death did not die came back and she could remember what happened when she was in that realm and then she articulated that beautifully in the book and what was the purpose that changed in her life when she came back and today she lives in singapore her name is anita morjani an indian uh, raised in malaysia and then living in singapore marvelous book ashi i think all of guys listening to ashish and talking about this chapter on the death if you read that chapter i would recommend all of you to go and pick up this book it's called dying to be me by anita bojani this was beautiful and ashish please pick it up if you not picked it up i will today itself <laughs> it is fantastic she just spoke about how did she go through that she was in a state of coma in different realms and she could see what's happening in the worldly realm and she could see what's happening in those realms and this is called a near death experience and i went and researched there is an organization that works on near death experience cases and it is it is your goosebumps have goosebumps ashish when you read that story oh marvelous i'll go i could so relate to it ashish because in the last 2 years i've had 14 deaths around me in my near and dear friends and families in the age of 38 to 57 and for me this is the point where aaj abhi kisi death hota hai to i don't get tears in my eyes not to sound very melodramatic here but this book was beautiful yeah so thank you thank you for that lovely that's a lovely conversation i can keep going on and on but for constraint of time i'm going to take you to the last question ashish yeah. with all that so many years of experience of corporate and an entrepreneur that you are plus a book lover wo sab ko nichod ke aise ke glass mein ras banao to usme se please pull out two razor sharp advices for the young leaders who are listening okay. to you okay i i'll probably take a freedom and move to maybe three or four maybe because i please I, go I, ahead with with book today more with the book today because i think uh, they are very usual leadership sort of you know uh, suggestions but they are linked with your consciousness as a play you know i think lead yourself first you know that's most important you know before you start leading people you need to be absolutely in control of yourself so lead yourself first that's a very basic thing observe more listen more react less that's very very important you know i think you should always welcome uncertainties failures never try to avoid them never try to you know you know book run away from them you know they are all the management books will always keep telling you one way or another that that defines you your failures your uncertainties will define you so welcome them you know mm. accept them you know don't have a fixed mind model we discuss about it you know keep looking oh. for innovations be on the edge very very important uh you know get your balance right we spoke about yeah. it you know. yeah. and you know i think uh, use your mind for solutions we also discussed about that don't mm. try to uh, use your mind to fit everybody else in your world That's rather you be a, you know i think these are the things which stay with me Uh, as as leader, which you should always uh, follow, and uh, and pick, and that's the reason that you know you create that performance culture because it just rubs off. Absolutely, absolutely. Thank you so much, Ashish, for doing this. And I'm going to add one more advice on this: go and pick up the book and read the book. <laughs> If I can say that, right? Thank you so much, Ashish, for coming in once again. Uh, it was a pleasure talking with you on this book. I yeah. hope you had a good time. Same here. Absolutely. Thank you so much. Lovely. I look forward to seeing you in person someday, Mashish. When I start flying on work, I think it's just a matter of time. Soon I'll see you. Looking forward. Thank you. Yeah. So you have a good time. Till then, keep reading. Yeah. Bye bye. Thanks. Bye. Mm-hmm.